Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. In today's financial year 22 result video, I'm going to be focusing on Australian Clinical Labs. This company listed on the ASX in the middle of 2021. And I would call it an opportunistic listing because they saw some significant tailwinds. And we'll, we'll call it short term tailwinds behind the company and the management or owners of the Australian Clinical Labs decided to take advantage of those tailwinds. Now, I am not critical of the company doing this, the management doing this, because I think this is exactly when you do want to list on uh, equity exchanges, when you do want to become a publicly listed company, is when there are significant tailwinds behind you. The same sort of thing when you're doing capital raising. You want to capital raise when the share price is at all-time highs, not when the share price is at all-time lows. And another way to look at this is the worst time to take your company public is during recessions. That's why during recessions, recessions, uh, IPOs on equity markets are at all time lows. So Australian Clinical Labs listed on the ASX about or just over one year ago, almost uh, 18 months ago. And we did see the share price rise significantly after they listed, but the share price has been falling uh, over the past, say, six to nine months because those initial tailwinds have come to an end. And those tailwinds are COVID-19 tests because Australian Clinical Labs is a pathology services company. So they do lots of tests, blood tests and all those sort of tests. So of course, when COVID-19 was running rampant, the amount of people, Australians doing COVID-19 testings were off the chart and Australian Clinical Labs were one of the companies that uh, benefited from all those tests. What I call Australian Clinical Labs a high or low quality company, I'm probably leaning more towards the low right now because I need a little bit more history in regards to their financials to consider this company to be high quality. And if I did consider Australian Clinical Labs to be a high quality company, right now, with a pretty low valuation. So the P ratio of this company is in single digits. I think it's like four or something. You would think this is absolutely great value. That's why I probably wouldn't consider this company to be high value just yet. The other thing is they have taken advantage of these really significant tailwinds and the financial results we saw in financial year 22 won't be replicated in financial year 23 and more than likely won't be replicated in financial year 24. So we will see profit operating cash flow fall away quite significantly in the next two financial years because those tailwinds, unless we see another massive round of COVID-19, which I don't think we are going to see. And even if we do see that, even if, even if we do see that, I don't think there's going to be as many people wanting them wanting them tested, wanting to go out there and do COVID-19 tests. I know for personal experience, I am not doing any more COVID-19 tests uh, moving forward from here. So I think at this point in time, I probably will consider Australian Clinical Labs to be a lower quality company. However, they have the opportunity to surprise us and to prove me wrong over the next three or five years. And the way they would do that is to show that COVID-19 wasn't just a one-off, that the rest or the other parts of their business are growing and they're growing really strong. And not only that, they have significant margins. That's one of the other things I am concerned a little bit in regards to Australian Clinical Labs is the lack of margins pre-COVID-19. For full disclosure purposes, I am not a current shareholder of this company. I was a shareholder for a short period of time back in 2021 after they listed so even though I do have a rule only to own companies six months after they listed, I do have a slight, a slight amendment to that rule. And that is when a company releases a profit upgrade within that six month window from when they IPO. And Australian Clinical Labs did exactly that. In fact, in fact I think they released maybe two or three profit upgrades soon after they listed. I took advantage of that, but as soon as I saw those tailwinds starting to wind down, that's when I decided to take my profits. So I am not a shareholder of this company right now, but I have been a shareholder in the past. And if I see an opportunity in the future, 
I won't be hesitant about taking another position in this company. And if I do take a position, more than likely, it's going to be off the charts, any sort of change in the trend and sentiment behind this company. And more than likely, it'll just be a short to medium term hold. And this is the chart for Australian Clinical Labs. So because I would consider this company to be a lower quality company right now, doesn't mean uh, they won't become a high quality company in the future. The chart is the most important thing. What is the sentiment right now? Is a share price in a downtrend or an uptrend? Now, if we go back to when they listed on the ASX back in, looks like May of 2021, the share price was around about $3.50. And the share price went from that $3.50 all the way to a high of $6.30, which was reached towards the end of 2021. So those tailwinds only lasted about six months, about six to seven months before the share price did reach its high. Now, the share price didn't start going down straight away. We did see the share price really go sideways, a little bit of volatility in there, but we've really seen the share price take a bit of a dive since about August. In fact, the share price has decreased from about $5.50 to a current share price around about $3.50. Not only the share price right now is almost identical to when the company listed on the ASX way back in May of 2021. So if you take the start point of Australian Clinical Labs on their journey and the end point, which is right now, the share price has done absolutely nothing. Now let's have a look at the financial year 22 results for Australian Clinical Labs. Now the share price is $3.49 at the end of trading on November 17. So of course, if you are watching this video after November 18, have a look at the share price. And if the share price is lower than $3.49, that means the markup of this company is less than $704 million. Or if the share price is considerably higher than $3.49, the markup of this company is significantly more than $704 million. Now on to the financial year 22 numbers. Revenue, $997 million. Profit, $178.2 million. So let's just compare financial year 22 profit to the markup. And simple mathematics show us that the P ratio of this company is just above four. Yes, just above four. So if you were just blindly looking at the P ratio of companies and you saw Australian Clinical Labs had a P ratio of four, you saw that the revenue was climbing over the past few years, you would probably think this is the cheapest company on the ASX. But there is a reason why the P ratio of this company is so low. And we'll talk about that when we look at the valuation metrics later in this video. Operating cash flow, 192.4 million, and the free cash flow, 171.2 million. So just based off the financial year 22 results, their profit and cash flow, this company does look cheap. So the market is anticipating that those numbers will fall in the future. Now let's have a look at the revenue, operating margins, and selling general and administration expenses for this company over the past six years. So we do have financial data for this company going back to 2017. The main thing to see here is how much revenue has climbed over the past few years. In fact, it's more than doubled from $491 million in 2020 to $995 million in 2022. The other thing to pay attention to here is those general and administration expenses. They have not climbed. In fact, uh, those expenses are almost identical to 2019, around about $314 or $315 million. And that means the operating margins of this company have absolutely increased at fantastic rates over the past few years. And the main reason I would surmise that the operating margins of this company have really gone gangbusters is because of COVID-19 testing. So before COVID-19, the operating margins of this company was negative. This company was not profitable before COVID-19. So even though this company had pretty high revenue, so revenue above 300 to $400 million, this company was not profitable. They had negative margins, negative profit. But as soon as COVID-19 came along, those margins increased, particularly those COVID-19 margins, all those testings they, they did. Uh, those expenses did not increase, but their revenue increased at a significant rate. And that's the reason why this company is now highly profitable. But when compared to pre-COVID times, this company was not profitable at all. So that is a little bit of a concern moving forward that if 
They don't get any COVID-19 revenue and those margins. This company could go back to what they were seeing back in 2019, back to pre-COVID levels with very low margins, with not much profit. One thing Australian clinical labs have done is break down their pathology testing revenue by COVID versus non-COVID. In fact, their non-COVID uh, testing is further broken down into Victoria and other states, which means this company is predominantly in Victoria. But the main thing to take away here is how beneficial COVID-19 testing revenue has been for this company, particularly in financial year 22, where they received about $420 million of COVID testing. Back in financial year 21, it was only about $137 million of COVID-19 testing. And back in financial year 20, 2020, it was only $19.3 million. Not only that, you can see the breakdown in the first half to the second half of financial year 22, and COVID-19 revenue have fallen from $271 million to $149 million. And more than likely, that will fall further in financial year 23, and if it hasn't fallen to zero by the end of financial year 23, more than likely you'll fall even further in financial year 24. If we take a look at non-COVID-19 pathology testing revenue, we do see some nice growth, not really strong growth, but some nice growth. So back in financial year, or the first half of financial year 20, uh, 2020, non-COVID revenue was around 253 million. And in the last half, it was about 295. So nice growth, but not really significant growth. So this particular slide found in Australian Clinical Labs uh, financial year 22 presentation just shows us how beneficial COVID-19 was to this company. Now to the valuation metrics. And this is very important because if you believe that Australian Clinical Labs is a high quality company, you must be thinking this is the greatest or cheapest company on the ASX right now. Probably wouldn't say greatest, but definitely the cheapest company on the ASX because Australian Clinical Labs has a P ratio of four, price to sales ratio 0 0.71. So that's not really telling us much. We'd have to know what the competitors uh, price to sales ratio is. You'd have to also know what historical price to sales ratio. So 0 0.71 doesn't tell me much, but P ratio of four tells me a lot. And the price to operating cash flow is 3.67. That's really low as well. So just based on the P ratio and price to operating cash flow, if you thought this was a high quality company, those are really low. But I don't think this company would be, should be considered as a high quality company just yet. And the main reason is because of those significant tailwinds behind the company in financial year 22. And we will see revenue and profit fall significantly in financial year 23 and definitely possibly into financial year 24. Also did a reverse DCF just to see how much the market expects the operating cash flow earnings per share to drop over the next 10 years. So to justify the current valuation, the um, operating cash flow would have to drop at 21% per year over the next five years to justify the current valuation. So this just shows you the reverse DCF just shows you how much the market thinks the revenue, the operating cash flow, and the profit will fall for this company over the next five to 10 years. When most companies release their financial year results or their AGM, will provide some sort of guidance for the next financial year. But Australian Clinical Labs have not done that. And it's really understandable because they have no idea how much revenue they will get from COVID testing. Not only that, they also mention here that the financial results will be driven in part by the rate of rebound of non-COVID testing. So they are saying that during the last two or three years, the non-COVID testing has taken a hit because of COVID-19. That might be true. And it's actually something I have not thought about that they could have actually derived more revenue from non-COVID testing, but because of COVID-19, that sort of testing was depressed over the past few years. And that might have a bit of a rebound in financial year 23 into financial year 24. But I would surmise and assume, and that can be quite harmful to assume, that the margins in non-COVID testing are significantly lower than the margins in COVID testing. I plan to continue doing these financial year 22 results video for a while yet, 
And the next five videos I will be doing a video on, or the next five companies I'll be doing a video on, include SRG Global, which was a suggestion. So if you do have a suggestion for a company you like me to do a financial year 22 result video on, just leave that suggestion in the comment uh, section of this video, preferably a company that is profitable. So no concept or story companies or stocks. Also Hanson Technologies, Maya, Domino's Pizza, and Fortescue. That's all I have for this financial year 22 result video for Australian clinical labs. If you have a completely different opinion than mine, if you have a di completely different opinion than the market, if you don't think the revenue and the profit of this company will be hit significantly in financial year 23 and 24, if you think this company is really cheap right now, I'd love to hear from you. So leave your thoughts in the comment section of the video. If you have any other thoughts about this company, or any other company on the ASX, leave those in the comment section of this video and I'll see what I can do. Maybe I'll reply back to you. Maybe I won't, but maybe I will. Anyway, the last thing I should mention is I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.